Good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome, SD11, SD12. Uh, our esteemed instructors, Cole, how's it going, Cole? Um, today, we're here to talk about our midterm project. Um, our, intera our interactive game is called TMW. Uh, the origination, our thought process behind this game was um, I don't know if all of us are old enough to be in the 80s, but this is Zork. Uh, it's also a lab that SD11 will do in a couple of days called Order of the Objects. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a blend of between Order of the Objects, Zork, and uh, Age of the Empires with quests. So, um, our concepts beyond our game was to persist data. Um, if you guys have played like RPG games, you want to like log out, you know, store your data. Hopefully, when next time you log in, you should be able to see like the character that you created with its illustrious data and its statistics and etc. Um, we wanted to create an interactive battle. Um, we'll talk further about the characters and stuff. Um, the last two we incorporated were loot, like a virtual inventory of items that you guys can pick and choose from while creating a character and attack types and having different a unique blend of resistances per uh, attack. And we have different elements of attack. So the, our project was very multi-layered. So let's uh, log in. So um, if we log in, uh, everyone, I'm assuming we all have game experience so we can log in. Uh, when you log in, you're able to see, um, and we already have some awesome characters created, but you can also go to new character and go to character creation. And at this time, I'll pass it over to Jake. So everybody, hello everybody, my name is Jake. Um, I'm gonna step you guys through just the, the character creation really quick. Uh, you can see right off the bat that you can just add a name, uh, create a character of any name. Anybody have something right now? Really quick. What's the name? Paul Bunyan. Paul Bunyan. Um, you can also add a URL link to any image that you want, uh, and that will actually be your character's image. Right now, we already have selected an image for this character, and you will see it shortly. Uh, and then you're also able to see some of the base stats of this character. Uh, we, uh, you're, so you're able to kind of alter some of these stats. Let's go ahead and raise the power, critical, and physical resistance all the way up right now. Go. go ahead and create this character. So if you scroll down, you see some of uh, Connor's characters that he already has. And we created Paul Bunyan down here. And you can see just a brief description of some of the stats right off the bat. So we're going to go ahead and begin a fight uh, with a pre-built character that we already have. Let's go with the, the drunken dwarf. <laughs> yes. Click it. Yeah, the oh. internet here got very slow. There All right, there we go. Okay. All right, so you can see we've selected the drunken dwarf. Uh, you can still see his uh, energy and stats and everything like that. And then we actually have some quests that you're able to select from. Right now, we've already pre-built a quest uh, called Begin Again. Uh, so let's go ahead, or Beginning Again. Let's go ahead and venture forth into this quest. It's free Wi-Fi until we Yeah, this free Wi-Fi is amazing, though. <laughs> Should be able to connect to ours. Very easily. Very hard to it. Now you can venture forth. So, beginning again, uh, you just went through a terrible breakup and you decided to go for a walk. So let's continue. Yeah. You wipe away the tears and climb to the top of a nearby hill so you can watch your ex from afar. Someone, or something, taps you on the shoulder. Let's prepare for battle. So right here, uh, this is right before you actually enter a battle. Right now you have no gear, so it tells you and you go forth into the world cold and alone. Um, but this is where you would actually prepare and equip gear before a fight. So let's go ahead and go into a fight. So you can see that you have the, the drunken dwarf, who's you on the left, and the ogre on the right, and you're able to see their health, energy, and everything like that. And then we've got a pre-selected list of abilities that you get. When you create a character, you get a random set of abilities right now. And we kind of wanted it that way. That way, when you're selecting 
your different abilities and attack, or your attacks and everything like that, you're not able to necessarily guarantee whether or not your character is going to be very good. Um, and so let's go ahead and let's use decimate right off the bat. So, and yeah, you can defend and attack. And go ahead and decimate again. Hit him with a fireball. And yeah, go ahead and just just torch him. Ah, okay. So first stage is complete, and I'm going to go ahead and pass this on to Brian. Too. Sorry. Oh, sorry. This more tech stuff. Um, this is the inventory. Um, like right now, you have armor. You can select it. If you had a weapon, you'd be able to pick a weapon. But right now, you don't have a weapon, so you're getting this message. When you select a armor or equipment, you can see the stats on the right side of your screen uh, change. So if you select that, and what went up? Your dark resistance. Dark resistance went up. All right. And uh, from here, you can uh, continue on to a fight to the second stage. So uh, to talk a little bit more about the fight that you're going through here. Um, so we built the entire site using Bootstrap, right? So that allows, you know, a, a kind of a, a variable display based on the size of the screen that you're using, right? So Bootstrap will look at how many pixels wide your screen is. And if Jake, if you move it a little bit, it will uh, eventually it will uh, collapse itself on top. So, hey, if you wanted to play on your phone or something like that, the display is still large enough so that you should be able to see just fine. Um, these are actually bootstrap progress bars, right? So a progress bar, you know, normally goes up, but we were able to get it to go in the reverse, right? So it that actually show the percentage of your health that remains. Uh, if you do like, I don't know, like fireball real quick or something, and do another, right? So you can see your energy is a progress bar that's going in the opposite direction. The same thing with your health. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about how we did like the red health for the green health in, in a little bit. Um, go ahead and uh, torch a little bit. Or blizzard. Oh, no more blizzard disappeared, right? So the reason that blizzard disappeared is you don't have enough energy to do that, right? So we dynamically built our page so that the only available abilities that are available for you to use are the ones that you have enough energy to, to actually use. So go ahead and defeat this guy. Right, so you defeated him, crossed the bridge, trampled all over the wizard's turf and some of his carefully planted perennials. Uh, you received the black spindle for your efforts and pilfering pockets. So moving on, final stage. Uh, so the wizard never showed up. He's too lazy to build himself a portal and come. So he sent like a shade of himself. So prepare for battle. All right, so go ahead and equip the black spindle and you'll actually see the power go up. And then let's go fight. So it is kind of important to, uh, to note that for the purposes of this presentation, we did lower the power of the enemies, right? Because we did not want to lose in front of you and then have to go back through it again and waste all of your time. So go ahead and uh, just use one of the abilities, Decimate Torch. Yeah, and that's kind of why, right? E losing even when the shade's power is like lower than yours is still a definite possibility, right? So moving on. So, surprise, there's actually another stage, right? Uh, it looks like the wizard has contracted one of his associates to come and destroy you. Uh, you better get him before he gets you, because he actually has a super high critical, uh, critical stat, which increases his chance of doing critical damage to you. So this next character could just destroy you in a single hit. So we'll uh, fight with that armor. That's fine. That's good. All right. Go ahead and use Torch, hopefully. hopefully. Yeah, I don't know. This one, this one might. So he used his weakest ability, and it's a good thing, too, because otherwise we... We definitely could have died. So moving on. And beginning again, uh, you are as impressive as Moses Lee. That's your final. <laughs> All right, return. Okay. And then back to the side. And Brian will talk uh, about the technologies that we use to build a set. Okay, in building this project, obviously, we use a little bit of Java. Actually, a lot of Java. Uh, there's this uh, build tool you guys haven't heard about yet. Uh, Gradle, which is how we're uh, building the project. You know, we have our tests. We use MySQL for uh, the database, uh, JPQL and JPA for object <coughs> relational mapping in the database, so everything links up to the database uh, from the Java side. We also use, uh, as Connor mentioned, Bootstrap, CSS, and HTML for the front end where you can, 
where you can uh, see, see your stuff and interact. Click around and uh, Spring MVC for uh, controlling the view you see. All right, so this is a quick code snippet, um, one that I'm particularly proud of in the game character class. Uh, this allows, is, or part of the ability to, for a character to actually take damage. Um, what, it's, what it's doing is it takes in the enemy that's attacking them and the ability that that enemy used. Uh, and then based off that ability, and there's, there's many more if statements after this for each physical damage type, or uh, different damage type, for that ability's uh, damage type, it properly uses the uh, resistance that you have to modify the damage that you take. Uh, I also designed it in such a way so that if an ability has multiple damage types, such as like a frost fireball, it would actually apply the frost resistance to your uh, and then to the damage and then the fire resistance to the damage. Add those two together, and then that would be the damage you took. Um, and that took that was a decent while to try and figure out. It was very, very fun to build though. Um, and our next code simple. Yeah, that's kind of what we wanted to emphasize was kind of like fun to build, you know, something that we could actually use, right? Maybe not something that we can market, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> um, so this is the code that actually builds that progress part that we were talking about. So what you do is you take, uh, you, you first set a value for the old health of the enemy, right, before you attack them, right? So you get their health at the start of the turn, you attack them, and then you get their health at the end of the turn. You convert those to uh, percentages, right? And then you display that percentage of progress in the progress bar, right? So their new health will be that green percentage, right? 60% or whatever, right? And if their old health was 70%, you subtract the two, and then you add a 10% red progress bar onto the end. Uh, this is our database schema, right? So we built uh, the database in MySQL, um, and then we used MySQL Workbench to uh, kind of organize our tables and stuff. So you can see that it's uh, focused on this game character table. It's kind of hard to see in the back, but it's connected to a player. So a player can have many characters, uh, you know, so you can have many characters. Uh, we also have a many to many relationship between the ability table and the game character table, meaning that a game character can have many abilities and an individual ability like Torch can belong to many different characters. Uh, we have similar relationships with uh, inventory items. And then quests have multiple stages, but then each one of those stages has a monster that you fight, right? Which is also a game character. Uh, these are some of the challenges that we faced. Uh, my primary challenge was in displaying, right, kind of using Bootstrap kind of for the first time to display all of that stuff. Um, and then also, like, when do you send the information about how much energy the character has left? When do you send the old health and the new health? When do you apply the attack? Right, so my one uh, gameplay loop that we loop through has like a ton of different logic about like when to, you know, do separate things, and that was probably the biggest challenge. Um, like some challenges for login were twofold. Yesterday, I asked our awesome TA Pat, who's not present right now, how can we break the login? Uh, he was able to break it within like eight seconds. He typed in a really illustrious, super lengthy password. Um, that's an easy fix. You just have to go back into Dale Impl and just make a validator like an if statement less than. I changed it to less than 40 characters. No one could like try to make a really long password. And the second part was this um, the cryptographic part. When cryptographic part, when I try to encrypt it, uh, a password a user could t pass in a string. But uh, in the back end, the database, it was saved in as a secure hash algorithm. So the, the problem I'm talking about is uh, when I returns to the modern view, it would come back as a string, a plain string that you typed, like for example, password one. So I had to go back in and change the encryptor data to make sure it returns the encrypted password. Um, and the next, uh, for our next release, I would probably incorporate more of Spring. I would use more of Spring's awesome magic, such as their authentication manager, um, change the configuration a little bit, which would be a lot easier to handle. Uh, another one of our challenges is... Yeah, um, I'm work busting with the inventory. Uh, my biggest challenge was working with the inventory because I was like developing this uh, separately because we all had like our own stuff we were doing. Um, was like, okay, how do I actually display the inventory for a character? And it turns out, you know, like sometimes like some of the characters I was testing didn't even have an inventory, so I had to go back into the database and like give them give them stuff. Plus, um, writing the SQL statements for iterating through. Okay, I'm gonna pull all the weapons so that way the user could select a weapon. I would pull all the armor for that character so that way the user could select the armor. 
that was probably like a, my biggest challenge in terms of inventory, getting that stuff to display correctly and uh, pulling that stuff out of the database. And then uh, my biggest crutch, uh, I work primarily with the game character class itself. Um, I was trying to work uh, directly with all the things that Brian was building and all the things Connor was building primarily and trying to communicate between those two in an effective way and also um, making sure that I had the correct field variables. Uh, we ended up using a lot of variables that are directly related to our database schema, but I also <coughs> incorporated a couple uh, transient variables in there. That way you were able to have a maximum health that you have, however you also want to know what the current health points of a character is without modifying their maximum health. Uh, so that was a, a field that I incorporated there. The same way with uh, energy as well, energy and stamina. And you have a maximum amount of energy, but you want to only use up so much of it, and you still want to be able to see how much you can total you can have. Uh, that was that was pretty difficult. And then also designing a lot of the methods that the characters use. For instance, use item. Um, there are many different items that we have, like Brian was saying. Some are weapons, some are, we actually have some uh, edibles, like potions and stuff like that, and uh, weapons. Um, so you wanted, I wanted to be able to pass any item in there and use an item correctly based on what kind it was. So if it was armor, you're gonna equip the armor. If it was a weapon, you were gonna replace what your old weapon was and equip that weapon. Um, but you didn't want to necessarily equip a potion somehow. So, but you can still use the same method. And that was, it was very useful to use enums for that. I hadn't gotten much of a chance to do that before. And this was an excellent example of one. Uh, some of our future features that we would like to incorporate, that's fun to say, uh, character creation point allocation system, so that when you actually create a character, you only have so many points to use, and every time you level up, you can allocate those points uh, to whatever stats you want. Uh, we don't have that yet, but it w it's a very natural next step that we would like to take. Uh, a shop and money, that way you're actually able to purchase items uh, instead of just just getting random uh, weapons, you'd also be able to sell those items because all of the weapons we have do have a value associated with them. So you'd be able to sell them and buy the weapons and armor that you would like. Uh, a friends list in multiplayer, um, and that would also go right alongside content creation and sip sharing. The way this game is designed is that uh, we want to make it so anyone can design or build a quest. So you can build a quest, we'd like to make it so you could build a quest populate that quest with different monsters in those stages, add text so that it's a little bit more interactive, and then share those quests with friends. That way they're actually able to see and use those quests, have fun, it's more of like a, um, an interactive experience between people. Uh, and then as far as multiplayer goes, what we meant by that is not necessarily both of you fighting a monster together, but because game characters, like your character and a monster, are the same thing, we would like to make it so that you are able to battle other people. So like, you can level up your character after fighting through a bunch of dungeons and quests and then fight your friend. Uh, and yeah, any questions on that? So the enemy attack, um, is that a completely random selection or do they meet conditions depending on what your attack is and then they respond? Uh, so what actually happens is, because it's not JavaScript, right? JavaScript we could probably more easily have you attack than them attack, right? easier to display. But in order to do the loop, I kind of had to do both attacks at the same time. Okay. So what actually happens is your character attacks first, right? To give you the slight advantage that we really needed before we powered down these monsters a little bit. <laughs> right? Because we used to die on the first that ogre every single time. Like 100% of the time. Uh, so, so we wanted a little bit of an advantage in that way. But then the enemy attack was uh, so what would happen is they would look at their energy and then they would look at their most powerful attack. They didn't necessarily know what you were resistant against, but they would choose the, the most powerful attack that they had. Uh, as well. yeah. else? Go ahead. So what is the next phase for you to get? I'm assuming you're going to have a visual component added where that's happening. Are you going to do that? Uh, that'd be really nice, but I don't think any of us are great artists. <laughs> so, so the next phase for us would probably be and we already had it, it was one of the, some of the tables that we actually had to take off of our database. Uh, the friends list, so the friends list and content creation. So we had it so that for a little while you could create your own quests, right, and then play your own quests, play other people's quests. You know, people could link them, they could email them to or, or whatever, but it was pretty buggy. So we didn't want to like put that in our demo. Mm -hmm. 
Another cool implementation we wanted to get to was kind of like a Gears of War, where if you die, you don't just die and you just have to like respawn, start all over and respawn. You could have like came alive as a ghost, and you can use like other people from your friends list quest to like come back and attack the enemy character with your shared content. So it's for next release. And we do have an admin login. Uh, so when the admin logs in, they have the ability to change monsters, change their stats, make things a little easier, change actual game characters, so they could reach in and change anybody's character, delete them, those type, types of uh, abilities that admins probably should have. For those inappropriate named characters. Yes. <laughs> Especially once you get to multiplayer. <laughs> That's what you want. How did you coordinate the work on the project? Who did what? How did you keep track? How did you do that part of it? Um, that was that. That's definitely a challenge. Uh, working in groups like this or small groups, trying to evenly distribute uh, work is always a challenge. But what we ended up doing is a bit more of instead of each person working individually on a section, we did more pair programming. So two pairs. And we would work on typically the same section together. So when I was working on the game character class um, and somewhat into the controller, we had, and that was uh, Moses and myself, Brian and Connor were working on the front end side of that. And then we would switch roles so that everybody got a little bit of an experience working on both the front end side of things and more on the back end side of things. And that ended up working out very well. Um, and because we were both working on the same section typically, we were able to quickly and efficiently communicate. Uh, right off the bat, we would write down things such as variable names and pre-agreed on variable names. That way we didn't have to be looking and messing with things that the other person's working on at the same time. Yeah, we found that it, when people worked individually, their code generally didn't make a ton of sense to other people, right? right? right. And part of the reason was, you know, you kind of get a narrow focus and then you can't really kind of shift your focus from, you know, to do things the easy way or the right way, especially when you're first learning like we are. So it's a lot easier for you know the pair programming, right? Be able to bounce something off of somebody else. Hey, that's actually not how we were taught to do it because there's a better way to do it using Spring, or there's a better way to do it using JPA, or, as opposed to doing things the hard way. Uh, the one thing I'd like to add is like everything else was like pretty well encapsulated in terms of like our JSPs, in terms of our controllers, in terms of our in terms of our uh, data implementations and our data access objects. So that way, like the minimal, like in addition to pair program, the minimal of stepping on each other's toes was, was, was way down there. Yeah. Yeah, we we didn't have merge conflicts like at all, pretty much compared to like previous yeah previous projects. Yeah. Anymore? All right. Well, good job. Thank you. Thank you.